episode of 11 of Crusader Kings 2 Holy Fury Pagan Tutorial. We are 12 years old. We are over our limits because we now have a terrible, terrible regent who's not even the same religion, which is very not good. He is depressed though, so we could hope that he dies. I do have to say, if we got the event to kill our guy, we would totally take it. Mm -hmm. uh, this having a regent that is not in favor of you is not good. And our brother is an adult, so he could totally try and pull some shenanigans. And people like him because he is a gray eminence. The more diplomacy, the more people like you. If we hover over here and we see personal diplomacy. Our opinion of him, which doesn't really matter because we are, um, you know, we're being controlled by the player, but we can tell that we technically view him better because he is, he has high diplomacy. Uh, the fact that he's weak, though, and we're tribal does make him less well-liked by people. But we can always marry him to someone. We can marry him to a Bavarian princess who's baptized by the Pope. Interesting. I'm not sure we want to marry him to anyone at the moment, though he is our only possible heir. Hmm. She's not bad. She's someone's concubine. Oh, that's why. Yeah, marry her to him. She's, she's a good age. There's no real things you're looking for. Um... I mean, her stats are not great, so if we were playing as him, uh, more this is sort of a roleplay thing in that, you know, she's baptized by the Pope and yet now she's married to a pagan. Uh, her father is leading a revolt. The revolt is to for his war for Bavaria, and we can sell that. It's 75% in favor of him, so he is possibly winning, but he's also fighting with two conquests. Uh, yeah, it, it's not going well for him. Alright, you, you accept because he probably kidnapped. What likely happened here, if you're curious, is the man that she was, the lord that she was living with, had likely um, kidnapped her and turned her into a concubine. And this is interesting. His children have vanished without a trace. That is usually something that happens when one of the parents is the spawn of, or is in the devil society and uses them to stay alive longer. Which is entirely possible. All right, so here we go. Since he's our heir and he's getting married, we can collect a royal aid duty, so we can either get 10 gold or we can get 25 prestige. Neither are truly spectacular at this moment, but we will take the prestige because there's a little more and we can totally use it on a building. We're going to come here and spend 400 prestige on the training grounds. Because that is a very good thing to do. It's very useful. Uh, we could go to war again as well. And that would be nice. We could go to war and try and take one of these counties. He has 1.26k troops. We have a bit more than that. Uh, we can also go to war with this man again fairly soon. Yeah, we can't afford to lose prestige. Um, we can come here and hover over. So there he was. Pomerania, 789 in a year and a bit. Alright. Uh, now that we are 12, some of the time of our childhood, event, childhood traits can become adult traits. So we have lost brooding and become envious, which is probably the worst choice. I would have preferred just or even raw. Um, it does give us one more intrigue, so it's not too bad. Liege opinion, though, doesn't matter. So, actually not the worst trait in the world. Again, that's why brooding was not a bad decision to take. Uh, yeah. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta live with things like that. And we'll pause and keep going. We could go to war with this man and take one of his pieces of land. 
Which I think is honestly a good decision. Except for the fact that our council hates us. And says no. Mainly because these guys are Grelly accounts. There's no glory in this war. The enemy is too weak. What about this man? This man everyone would say yes. So we could totally do a conquest of Plock. I think we're going to. This man's troops are not that spectacular. Oh, we'll pause. We will call our vassals who will help us. We will raise our troops. And with our vassals' help, we can totally take that land. Because we do dream. We do dream of an empire. The Wendish Empire. And we will obtain it. We also need holy sites. And that's not a holy site. But... It's nice. I think it's one of their holy sites. Yep, so we're taking a holy site away from the Slavic peoples. Which is, you know, it's, it's not a problem. They will try and fight us on it. But right now it would be really, really bad to die. Since we're over our demence limit. And we're over our vassal limit. If you ever die being over your vassal limit, there's a very, very good chance that... Some of your vassals will break free if they don't like you. And they can because you're over your limits. Um, it's, it's not a good thing to have. Especially when you, a lot of your vassals don't like you. Such as these ones that are the wrong religion. It would be really nice to get legalism one right now. Thing is, that would cost us 91 points of tech. We don't have 91 points of tech. And that's, you know, not the best thing. We do need a new steward. We can put our guardian on the th on their steward. He's pretty good, actually. We'll do that. He's another glory hound. But again, it won't matter so much when we turn 16. Or 16. Yeah, 16. Three years. Alright. Uh, we're going to go take out this guy. Take out his troops. Get a lot of war score from that. Before he, you know, sieges down this province, which he was getting fairly close to. We defeated him. Victory. Back over to Plock. So we can sit there and siege down. This is called the war goal. When you are going to war for a specific area, piece of territory, the war goal is the piece of land you're trying to take. And you get a lot more war score for physically taking over that bit of land than I would for sieging the other counties that we're going to. And one thing that I haven't mentioned that I will is, unlike EU4, you can't renegotiate peace deals. If you did see that, pretty much what we declare the war for is what we take. You can't change it. If you are fighting a defensive war, you m can win money and prestige, and that's about it. Um, so sometimes you'll find with the defensive wars, if you're fighting a major one, and then you get several more, the major one, you might just want to beat it into white peace because you're not he's still gonna lose prestige for white piecing when it's an offensive war but you wait wait we're almost there um you then have the time to go fight your other wars or sometimes you'll be doing an offensive war and one of your neighbors will decide that you look like a tasty weak target because you're busy and distracted but if you can beat them into a White piece, see here, if we did it, we would lose prestige because we declared war. They would get prestige. Um, surrender is very bad. But a white piece, if you are defending, always gives you prestige. And it usually hurts the other person. But they'll agree to it if they think they're going to lose. And you just don't have the time to fight all the way through it. We're going to enforce demands. We have usurped the title. We probably can't give it away to anyone. We will give away the church. And let's go let's go raiding. Let's just go take a little bit of money. It's usually a good thing to do. Defeat. Wait, what? Oh. So we're bordering a horse lord here. That means he is raiding our provinces. That's not really nice. The Kingdom of Italy! So... That's not good news. At all. 
King Carl of West Francia. Hello, Charlemagne. He, um... He's technically taken Italy. He might be able to form the HRE. And the Byzantine Empire is for some reason ruled up here. This is the strange stuff that happens. The Byzantine Empire... Emperor is tribal. Which means... Which means the world is very strange. Um, considering they usually... Oh, we fought some guys. They usually rule from down here. Or if they lose control, it goes to one of the other feudal vassals. We now have a tribal in charge. Huh. But it's the new elective system, so it will probably go back to a feudal person. That's still very strange. Alright, we're sieging down money. Uh, we have asked for help managing our titles, so you can do this. Don't ever click this button if you can help it. The AI um, will tend to give out land that benefits them. Not you. I mean, if you really want an extra challenge, you can do it. But it's not normally a good decision. Uh, we can give away clock. Good. Everyone's saying yes. Uh, yep. You are vastly over your defense limit, so they're actually being nice. We also want to give away Naklo. They wouldn't let us before. How about oh, you're married to my? You are an old man. I'd prefer to give it to someone younger. How about you? We will try and give away the county of Naklo. There we go. They did fix it. Uh, at one point, the there was no bonus to your counselors to help you give away land when you were over your demence limit. So people would be angry at you for owning too much land, and then they wouldn't give you permission to give away your land. Which, when you're a child and stuck in a regency and you can't even disobey the council, it doesn't go well. It did not go well at all. We've also got a lot of things we can create, which would give us a lot of prestige. But right now, we're gonna go... We'll go raid this province. The coronation of Charlemagne. Well, this is interesting. Usually, I see him just form Francia because he doesn't get Italy. But he got Italy, so... Charlemagne is been crowned by nobody. Strange tidings. Crowned by nobody. Uh, I'm taking it he probably picked up the crown from the, the Pope and just put it on his own head. Maybe. He did form it as France, though we have the French flag. Huh. Very interesting. A very, very interesting. Not something you get to see a lot of folks. Usually he just forms the Empire of Francia. That is going to make our life harder, I have to say. And because... He... Yeah, it is princely elective. Okay, someone was asking me about that. So yes, if you form the HRE, it automatically turns it into princely elective. Hmm, good things to know. That's how it was before, but I wasn't 100% sure because things have changed in patches and it's been a long time since I've played with creating the HRE. And we're just, you know, bopping around, getting more funds, so when we turn to 16, we can become a king. A grand king. And we may have to give up our designs on the Windish Empire at this rate. Which is not something we like to hear, but can be a possibility. Um, I think we'll finish sieging this one down. I do want to go to war, though. We want to go to war on this guy and take another piece of land, and then we have to wait ten years, or for him to die, to take another piece and go after this one. Because um, we would like to take our holy sites. It would be much appreciated. We are 14. We are getting closer. We're going to siege this one down. We'll bop up to speed 3. Speed 4? Speed 4. 
Uh, just long enough, also awesome, to take all the money. And all right, so here we go. This is this is a quite common pop up. I've been having these special feelings for a special someone lately. The strange urges to find myself embraced and close to another person. If I only find myself alone with the carpenter's daughter, the farrier's apprentice, which gives us the trait homosexual, which is a fertility malice, but attraction opinion plus 30 for those that are interested in men. And vassal opinion minus 5. No, I had better keep these thoughts to myself. So if you're role-playing quite often, I'll roll a dice and pick one, or I will let chat vote and pick one. It's usually a toss-up, honestly, between which ones they pick. But if you're playing this the first time, I would go with the carpenter's daughter, because you want babies, and that malice to fertility is not usually very useful. <laughs> also, the fact that your vassals will dislike you for it is not very useful either. But go right ahead. If you want to pick Farrier's Apprentice, it it just makes it for a bit of fun roleplay. And as an adult, if you take the seduction focus, you can seduce men. Or women, if you're playing as a female child here. But we're going to go after the Carpenter's Daughter. Just for ease of play. And Alright, we've taken all the money. So there we go. I've started... I've learned that if I put my mind to something, I will usually get it. I was just being stubborn. So Willful is giving us stubborn. We're not getting ambitious or brave, which would be awesome. Instead, we're getting stubborn. Which is minus diplomacy, plus stewardship, plus three personal combat skill. I'd rather take ambitious. Are we already ambitious? That's why. We must have gotten it randomly. Oh, we are rivals. So, what happened here is there's a common pop-up when you are tutoring someone that you can either make them ambitious, make them patient, make them uh, diligence, and they all have a malice towards you, or you can ignore it. Our leader, our guardian here, our elder, he picked um, the, the fact that he would make us ambitious, which did make him our rival. So we are rivals to each other, but he made us ambitious, which made it impossible for us to get ambitious from our willful trait. Instead of brave, we got stubborn. I would have preferred brave, but we will take the stubborn. All right. So after weeks of waiting for the ripe opportunity, I found myself behind the barn alone together with a carpenter's daughter that my heart has been longing for. My palms are sweaty and my chest is pounding. So you can become chaste, which is a malice to fertility, but it gets you more piety. If you are playing as a Catholic, chaste is actually a pretty good toss-up. I mean, you can you get the fertility malice, but everyone thinks better of you because it's one of the, um, the good traits. The virtues. The seven virtues. You can kiss her on the cheek and get nothing, or you can suggest a secluded cuddle inside the barn and become lustful, which gives you fertility bonus, minus monthly piety, but the and the Christian church dislikes you. Well, we're not Christian, and we want babies, so we're going to suggest a secluded cuddle inside the barn. Ooh la la. And we're going to lower our troops, check our troop counts, we're doing okay, and we can go declare war on this man again. So we're going to do this one, and we could go for any of these, but I'm going to take Slupsk, because then the next more we can take Skijin, and then go after the beautiful island there. So... Oops. We are going to declare conquest of Shlupsk, our one, our rival. <laughs> the guy we gave council power. Yep. We're going to declare war. We're going to call on our vassals who will actually help us. We will raise our troops. And we will go fight this little war. Um, we are going to drop the speed back down to three. Don't ever try fighting on four. I do that sometimes, but oops. Uh, there we go. I have many, many hours, and even then I still make mistakes if I try fighting a war on four. And good lord, don't fight a war on five. Speed five. That's a good way to have everything fall apart. Um, da -da -da. Come on down, my dear. Let's go, my dear troops. We have some armies to fight. What are you doing? Why are you walking away? You were reading. 
Really? Are we reading? I don't really understand what he was doing, but sure. Alright, there's something about that lad that I cannot stand, and I take the opportunity to show that whenever I can. I should feel bad for making him miserable, but my loathing for him is too great. So, this bastard... It's a bastard. He... Oh, yes, our marshal and his wife. Remember that's their first kid? Who was a bastard? So, we can make him our rival. Um, what am I doing? We can lose the trait envious. Or we can say he is a coward, and we hear... And uh, he will never defend himself. We can harass him. So we could lose the trade envious, which is not really that bad for us. Because we don't care about liege opinion and giving us a little bit more personal combat skill. So, but we don't want another rival. So we're just saying he is a coward. Um, we'll continue to harass him. Um, because rivals gift you that minus 100... Alright, so no matter what I expose Veliskis to, he still tries to make me his friend. I have started to feel a reluctant respect for Vasvilkas, and even though I still get great ideas for pranks, such as freeze in, freeze in Veliskis' clothes in a block of ice, or empty a chain pot over his head, it feels wrong doing so. So we can become close friends with this guy. Or we could still try and become bitter rivals. But, you know, he's... he's not a bad kid. He is not a bad kid, and we will make him study martial, and we will become friends. So now we have a good friend by choosing that. Alright, we're gonna go after these troops. Um excuse me. Oh, he took our he took the land, so it's reads a defeat. That's what's going on, but that's okay, we defeat his army. And then we will siege back the land. There's only 16 troops there. We have 5,000. We siege it back in a heartbeat. We're going to go take the war goal. And we're going to end this little war as quickly as we possibly can. Because we did siege this down beforehand, or we raided it for money. There's not that many troops. I'm going to bounce it up to four while we're just standing here. Because it is a little boring watching. He's going to war. We have one. Let's go siege down the next province, which again we have raided, so it doesn't have as nearly as many troops. Um, actually, it actually did have time to refill its garrison. Sometimes, if you attack fast enough after raiding, they don't have time. All right, but he has offered peace. One thing to do is if they offer peace, always make sure this says we surrender. Sometimes they will try and sneak a white piece in there. So you can read the whole thing, but we surrender, accept, or if you're really not sure, just go and propose your own piece. We have usurped the title. We have won the war. We are bringing our troops back home and standing them down. We're going to give away Slupsk to this man. Grand landed title, County of Slupsk. Everyone says no. Can we give it to someone else? Nope, they're all saying no again. So, that's okay. We will just sit over it. We are 15. We will be 16 in June. And that'll be for the next episode. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye!